Good afternoon once again everybody, Alex Starcraft here and I was temporarily taken aback because it seemed like this speed was too fast because Dramaga split those drones and sent them over here and they moved so quickly. It just kind of scared me but it shows exactly how good these players are. They make the workers move faster because they are intimidated because they are, now, they are working for some of the best of the best. And I just came with to a shocking revelation you guys i just realized top level players like damaga have been taught some of their most uh baseline strategies from the starcraft 2 replay slash general loading menu because i was just loading this replay and it was telling me your starting area will eventually run out of resources expand to another location to get more and i was like oh my god damaga likes to do that and i think we will be seeing that happen again on this map hopefully we will because resources are always a great thing to have and it looks like pommy will be as well of course this map very favorable for not one basing the entire game because we're not in the beta so hopefully this game is good but we do see a pool first coming down from damaga now this is kind of at all actually i don't remember what he did last game because i was talking for most of it about my stream and whatnot i'll let you guys know when i am streaming it'll take about a week for it to be up but it will be just twitch.tv slash elix starcraft i will try my best to work out a regular schedule for streaming just like it seems pommy has worked out a regular hotkey scheme where he hotkeys his nexus to four five six seven eight nine and zero that way no matter how bad your accuracy is with your finger when trying to make probes you will almost undoubtedly make a probe not to de detract from pommy's play or anything i'm sure he's much better than actually i know he's much better than i am because he beat the maga in game one with a very interesting ooh, little uh dance between these uh the probe and the drone right there but how appropriate yesterday was valentine's day they're dancing <laughs> but damaga does get that hatchery down he scares the probe off because he almost manages to kill it but what happened the last game is we saw pommy on tall dream altar he, I, he assumed damaga would be going mutas so he opened with a blind well he, okay he didn't see a third which i guess kind of tells you okay there's going to be some quick tech but he had no idea what kind of tech so he opened with an essentially blind double stargate and started chrono boosting out phoenixes until he had eight or so so th that was very interesting it screwed with the maga because he did not scout the stargate i do not believe i'm assuming he did not well he he okay he did at some point because he made corruptors when his spine uh when his spire finished undoubtedly he did not intend to go for the corruptors just because you know normally as a zerg player you want units that can shoot ground units unless they're going mass battle cruiser void ray something ridiculous like that but we'll have to see whether damaga does do the same thing or similar thing in this game as well as whether pommy does and of course again those um there's the spire the mutas are so good against protoss in the current uh patch the current version protosses are just now learning exactly how to deal with it of course in the next patch um for those of you that don't know what they did is they actually added a pretty big um buff there's a lot of debate going on as to exactly what is happening or what what uh, difference it will make what it does is it gives protoss an upgrade they can get in the fleet beacon that adds plus two range to the phoenix which does allow them to totally outrange mutas right now they have uh, equal range of four or maybe it's four and three phoenix might have a slightly greater range of course the thing being phoenix can attack while they're moving but what that will essentially let them do is if the zerg player is getting a, a huge number of mutas the protoss player can get that upgrade get a whole bunch of phoenixes and mutas will just actually be completely and utterly ineffective if the protoss micros a tiny bit whatsoever and if the Zerg player commits to Mutas, then the Protoss player doesn't even need to worry about his macro. He can just micro his Phoenix until all the Mutas are dead. So that'll be interesting to see what happens here. And it'll be interesting to see what Damaga goes for this game. He's throwing down this third gas just now, and the fact, or two gases just now, and the fact that this expansion, he is getting it this time, indicates he will definitely not be going for as fast as a tech play. And these two gases say to me, he will not be going for quite as hard of a tech play either. It won't be quite as gas intensive as the spire or mutilisk play is 
And of course, as I was saying, while mutas are a huge part of the current metagame, many players make great things happen, such as Xenia, Stefano, many of the Korean players like Leenok, Nesty. They make wonderful things happen with huge roach numbers and big economies. It is very fun to watch. And speak of the devil, there's the roach warrant, and there's the evolution chamber going down, saying I'm probably going to be going for a big uh, roach play. And that Demaga he does see this gas going down right here with this overlord and we'll see he doesn't see anything else but these gases almost by itself can tell the zerg player what the protoss will be going for i only learned this recently generally what will happen if they're going for a big gateway push something like that or a push sometime between the 8 and 10 minute mark they won't get these two gases or they won't get them quite as early but if they are going for a bigger teching play, something involving maybe blink stalkers, charge lots, or we saw the robo bay coming down, big numbers of immortals, or maybe even colossi. We will see these gases because they do need the extra gas in order to get out that higher tech. So Damaga's lair is on the way now. He's still operating off just the three gas. Uh, actually, he has a fourth one that he just started mining off in his expansion. You see he's got about 50, 50 gas mined off that now. And he's up to 60 drones over 50 probes from Palmy. And I would like to see him drone maybe just a little bit more. But actually, uh, one of the big keys of this build is getting the roach play coming early enough that the Protoss doesn't have... A scary enough ball that it can just take out your roaches what you want to do is you want to try and contain them put on some pressure maybe pick off some units stop them from getting a third stuff like that because you just have so many roaches and we do see that roach production is starting up along with zergling speed gileal gileal i always want to put another i before the l roach speed coming up so you have a whole bunch of upgrades and a fast infestation pit from damaga and this actually could be one of the best tech choices he could have made in the observer is actually not going to see the infestation but where is it uh it's right here by the natural very interesting position kind of exposed right there especially because with the obs the blink stalkers are just right there boom that infestation pit will go down but blink stalkers from palmy the thing with them they rely highly on their mobility their ability to uh, mitigate damage by constantly blinking back stuff like that but if uh, Damaka can get some key fungal growths, that's going to completely shut down that play, and we actually might see some very interesting play right here, I'm just watching. And based off the positioning of these stalkers, it looks like they actually are probably preparing for mutas, but not only do we have the warp prism, which could very well come in, now it might get spotted by this earning, but if it just goes like this, it will not be. It could come in, do some damage, force field the ramp, of course roaches kind of would destroy the sentries and this is what i thought would happen we have the stalkers running over here they are not going to be able to get up the overlord will see that so damaga sending some units up there being like oh god and we actually have the warp prism sighting the high ground and it is going to be doing a lot of damage right here and i just realized that my turtle beaches have not been plugged in this entire time which is why i've not been able to hear things very well i hope you guys can hear still hear things okay and by my turtle beaches i mean my headset not plugged in i mean to my speaker so i was not getting the sound straight through here they're going through the speakers but we have great force field it's coming out from palmy right there trapping almost all of the zerglings and preventing the roaches from attacking this could be very scary from Damaga. we see a whole bunch of zerglings as well as infestors on the way he will most likely be canceling this it's obviously going to be going down he's just waiting until the last possible second seeing if he can maybe save it but he has to decide and he does not cancel it he thinks maybe he can save it but it does not look like he's going to be able to for me zergling streaming in doing well against these blink stalkers but they do have the plus two attack doing a lot of damage and there goes the hatchery now we have the infestors out and they are able to fungal growth a pretty big blunch but they blink in snipe the infestors and that is not good for damaga he's down on supply he has 26 more lings and three roaches in production he's got plus two on the way as well as the plus one carapace but palmy has the upgrade advantage with the plus two attack he has the warp prism to constantly be making more reinforcing units just has to pull it back and these stalkers are going to town on these drones, on these spines, on the queens. And we see Damaga is just not able to kill any of this. He's losing so many drones, so many units. He's losing his economic advantage. He's down by about 40 supply. And guys, this does not look good for Damaga. He does have a fourth, which is soon to be his third base on the way in this very kind of exposed pocket. But we see all Palmy has to do here is just 
warp and stalk warp and stalkers warp and stalkers with that warp prism he is such huge numbers good god again with the plus two upgrades and the blink this is very scary and damaga doesn't really have units he's down by 30 supply we take a look at the units that he has 14 zerglings and two roaches he is less he oh he, okay the number of stalkers Pommy has is approaching the number of drones Damaga has. That does not look good. Here we do see the infestation pit getting sniped. Damaga getting the biggest fungals he possibly can. The drones totally withering before that plus two attack. Roaches popping, infestors popping, doing as much damage as they can. A big bunch of stalkers does die, but I just don't think it's going to be enough for Damaga. It looks like he's not, not in very good shape at all. And there is the GG from him. So, I hope the audio has been okay. Uh, as I said, I just noticed that my stuff was unplugged. It should still be fine because it would still be recording it coming out at the same volume. It's just a matter of going into my headset versus not. So, I'll take a look back. Even if it doesn't work, I'll probably still upload it. But the sound will be better from now on. I do promise you that. And in that game, we just again kind of saw Damaga with um, not necessarily the wrong tech choice, but not not enough i guess you could say roaches obviously are not great against blink stalkers hydras much better and these are the kinds of pushes these two base blink stalker timings very very scary so we, it is currently 2-0 palmy is up this is a best of five so he only has to win one more game to knock damaga out of the tournament so we will have to see in the next game can palmy close it out or can damaga start the path to an amazing comeback i'll bring it to you guys soon have a wonderful next few minutes